Chupapi? Chupapi El Nino? I'm back. It's a safety meeting where we get baked and try to make the world a better place. Now everybody yeah. get ready. It's time to get safe. Ooh, you so, already know. If I was to ask you two, when do you think the very first school shooting ever was? Honest question. When do you guys think it was? Just off the top of your head. Uh, oh, one. Well, Columbine happened in the 90s. So, 70s. You're both wrong. July 26, 1764, four Native men entered a schoolhouse and killed the schoolmaster and 10 children. All right. This was uh, at a school in Green, near Greencastle, Greencastle, Pennsylvania. Then on November 2nd, 1853, Matthew Ward bought himself a self-cocking pistol in the morning and then went to school and killed the schoolmaster for excessively punishing his brother the previous day. All right. From what I seen in the, thir- in the 1800s alone, there was 13 reported school shootings. All right. The first ever mass shooting in the United States was a school shooting. All right. 70 year old James Foster in April 9th, 1881, rolled up to a school with a shotgun and just opened fire into a playhouse, a playground. Yeah. And, you know, he, he didn't kill anybody, but he caused minor injuries to several students. All right. Most 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 school incidences and stuff like that up until like 1940. They were they weren't shootings. They were stabbings and people getting beat with like rocks and you know blunt objects and shit like that. But then, in the early 1900s, in 1903, in Inman, South Carolina, a one Reuben Pitts shot and killed his student, 17 year old Edward Foster, after Foster had resisted punishment, according to Pitts. All right. So according to Pitts, Pitts pulled out his gun to defend himself from Foster after Foster tried to stop him from punishing him. He smacked the gun away from him, causing it to discharge, shooting Foster and killing Foster. Pitts was later acquitted of murder. Hmm. Now, just to kind of like bring this all in, 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 in the 1970s, there was 163 mass shootings in America. All right. And then from 1980 to 1989, there was 218. From 1990 to 1999, there was 265. And then from 2000 to 2009, there was 353. And then from 2010 to 2019, there was 426. And then in 2020, just 2020 alone, there was 612 mass shootings and already in december uh or the early part of december of 2021 we have a total of 651 mass shootings in america now if you went through the list of all of these that i went through earlier of the school shootings and everything like that the commonality was not just guns all right it was mental health issues 90% of these kids felt bullied either by students or by the teachers in one way or another. Some of them were love quarrels, um, but none of them really were just psychopaths that rolled up into schools and just decided to kill everybody. Except for one. Sandy Hook. What's your question, Pat? My question is this now now it's nothing against you i'm just it's a it's a good honest question who is the people that keep track of this data of how many shoes happen i mean i don't i can't really give it yet answer i just i can tell you i found it all on duck duck go right so this is the most accurate information that i could find it's not that i it's not that i don't i'm not buying into what you're trying to sell because like i i feel like you're putting down i just I've learned from both 2020 and 2021 that data can be easily manipulated and loosely translated to fit an agenda. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I get what you're trying to say. But see, their agenda is trying to say that, that the gun is the issue, right? Okay. Right. See, yeah. what I'm trying to get at is it's not the gun. The yeah, guns were all played a role, but we also had this before that because, like I said, most of the issues pre 1940 were due to stabbings and beatings with blunt objects. The this was never, in my opinion, an issue of the weapon, it is an issue of the mind of the people. So, my question to you two tonight is how do we change our youth? To make them strong enough mentally to face the world around us. Because the world is not an easy place. It's not going to be nice to you. So there has to be a way for us to raise our children. Because the only way to change the world is to change your children. How do we do it? What do you I'd say, start off by... What's your answer? What do you say? So... I mean, Joe, I think you answered it, bro, while responding to Pat's question where you said the gun's not the problem, right? And so as far as the gun not being the problem, we got to direct it back to the people above us. I think you drove a hard point home, Joe, when you said it sums up to them being after our guns. Do you notice how the numbers just continue to double to fit the (laughs) narrative? How many shootings already in 2021? 651. And the number previous before was what? 612. Okay. So what we have is a, a increase in mass shootings, right? Especially in 2021, which is just a crucial year for everybody, a crazy year for everybody, a year where fear is being driven so hard. I think it comes down to taking our guns away. You're right, Joe. We got to change the children, right? Yeah. But the, but they're, they're trying to change the children at the same time. We're trying to change the children, right? So who do the children believe? That's where we got to start. How do we get the children to buy into us when there's so many entities out there? They want to take, the, Joe, it comes down to taking our guns away. And these the, that number, guarantee would have doubled by another 200. It's all patterns, even dating back to the 90s, like you said. I say yeah. 200 as a as just a number to throw out there because the point is it just keeps on doubling. Why is that, I guess? You know, you know what I found was funny while searching all of this? And then I'm going to go to Pat. You, It was easy to find what the motives were for a lot of these older shootings. Because I only gave you four examples. And on this, this article that I found alone, there was fucking hundreds from pre-1940. You know what I'm saying? But all of them, there was like a clear motive of what happened. They, they let you know it was because, you know, the kid felt, you know, you punished me too bad. You whooped me too bad. You know, it was an accidental shooting or whatever. Lover's quarrel. So, Pat, why, why, why don't they give us the information of why these things happen nowadays? You don't know why the Parkland shooter did what he did. Right. I think the reason why they don't tell you everything that you need to know is because we're not on the receiving end of the need to know. Right. Everything, everything uh, has has a, a, a priority list. Right. And if, since we're just regular people, we're not at the bottom of that priority list. So therefore, the need to know isn't there for us. We're going to find out 50 years from now. When somebody comes out with fucking chronicles of mass <coughs> shootings and has a real timeline of when and where and how, right? But as far as to those stories already having the motive that you were you were listing off, I mean, yeah, of course they have the motive. They got the motive. They they have they have the result. They have exact figures and numbers. Why? Because they're the ones telling the story. So therefore, you make the story as believable as possible. But on the same token, okay, this is kind of going back a step, but I feel I feel like this is important. So back when I was in school, right around 10th grade, when you transition from 15 to 16, driver's ed was an option, okay? Now, it wasn't a program through the school. But it was a program through the state that the the school funded, or excuse me, backed. 
So if you wanted to uh, uh, go online and try to get your permit or take your road test, the school would provide you with the resources to set yourself up for it. Why can't we take that same principle when it comes to gun control and gun safety? Why can't we be teaching children at the age of nine, 10 years old how to clean, use, uh, store, uh, respect the firearm? Because if you were to do those things rather than glorify it through movies and video games, I think you could have a better control. And I know control I'm using loosely, but I think you'd have better control on that person's involvement with guns moving forward in life because think about it right when you're four or five years old you're curious as to why the burner is burning and even though mom and dad tell you it's hot you're going to touch it because you need to know and then you touch it and it burns like hell and you cry well you can't do that with a gun so why not it be enforced and taught everything about it all the way to how it was made you know what i mean why not enforce that in school so that way when the time comes, people go back to fighting with their fists in their minds rather than with a pistol? What would be the motive, though? What would be the motive to that, Pat? Well, because we're soft, right? This whole next generation and the generation before us. I mean, I don't want to say anything bad, bad about my parents or my grandparents, but they were one of the first generations to be programmed long before we were. Right. They were taught they were taught nationalism. They were taught patriotism. They were taught that the flag is the only important thing that you need to care about and that you need to go and you need to work in the system. Right. I don't care what you do. You need to go work in the system. Wheels in a cog or cogs in a wheel. All the pieces come together. This is the machine. So the motive. He's got a point. Everybody's soft and nobody knows how to fight. Nobody knows how to use their brains to get out of a situation. Right. So oh, I, I guess again, uh-oh, though, Decepticons. again, though, oh, Pat, so because Pat, I completely agree with you. That's why I'm asking you, what would be the motive? Fuck. Ain't no way they want to do that, Pat, because like you said, we're soft. <laughs> That's their motive. <clears throat> They've got the motive to take away our guns and we just don't see it. Now, if everybody saw the motive the way you did, Government screw <laughs> in every way. Now think about this. Just, why do you why why do you really think this right here to take our guns away? People are going to think I'm a little crazy for this. Is the real reason for all these vaccine mandates, right? Because what do these vaccines mandates cause? They cause all the health workers, police officers, firefighters, <laughs> the emergency personnel to either take it or lose your fucking job. So what is happening right now? Like in Syracuse on Monday. The National Guard's rolling in to help with all the overstaffed hospitals that are really empty because they're oh you know they're they're full because they don't they're not staffed enough, but really there's oh not God. anybody there. So that right there is how they're gonna take your guns, right? You already got the government in, in the in, in the army in everyone's back door. They're all there. All right, and then the U the UN. America and doesn't even have to come take your guns. At this point, the UN can roll through here and fucking take everyone's guns. And there ain't shit no one can do about it. And they got the motive. Exactly. They got the motive. All they have to do is look at the statistics. Look now, at the data. How do you guys think that predating guns, that they, they had to have had a way to have sword <laughs> safety, right? Because everyone carried a sword, even little kids, right? Because you think about it, back in medieval times, what did little kids carry around with them? It wasn't a it wasn't a, a metal sword; it was a wooden sword. Why? To teach that child, you take care of this. This is your best friend. You don't know. You learn how to treat it. You do not mistreat it. You do not lose it. You get what I'm saying? You yeah. have to ingrain in our children that. These things aren't bad. You just have to know how to use it. Exactly. Yep. That because old cliche saying, right? That guns don't kill people, people kill people. Exactly. Like like this last school shooting. Like I find it a little suspicious that the parents got arrested, right? 
So either now they're going to try to arrest parents for just buying you buying the children the gun, which I don't think that's 100% right. Or the parents knew that this child was about to go shoot up the school and they actively helped them because there's also reports of the mother while the son was looking things up, like, you know, things about buying ammo and looking up guns and this, that, and the third, the mother came out and tell, told him, you better find out a way not to get caught. What if, now I'm playing devil's advocate for once, what if in this scenario, this this particular story, this shooting, they realized that constitutionally they dropped the ball with the written house case. So therefore they're going to double down on this one to make sure to prove a point. I think the written house case helped their point more than I heard it, to be honest with you. Well, they wanted to, they wanted to go after this kid for using an AR. He was under the age of 18 and he three killed three citizens. Right. So that right there, if you were to go back 15 years, would have got him locked up and it would have started a campaign to ban ARs, right? And since they've been trying to ban ARs for the better part of a decade, now they got on footage this kid killing three people or, you know, or killing two people and severely injuring a third. Okay. But the constitutional backed up everything and made it justifiable. Where in this instance, now it's just a 16-year-old kid. His parents bought him a gun. He went to school and shot everybody. Got one, right? Okay, go for it. And this is honestly what I believe that they did with the Retton House case. Because I've always said, between two of you, it's a false flag. There's something wrong with it. Right. They get him off, thus giving everyone the misconception <laughs> that... Defending yourself with a gun is the best decision, right? As long as you threaten me in some type of manner, I have the right to shoot you. That is going to cause this number of 651 mass shootings to rampantly go up because a lot of people nowadays make decisions based off of their feelings, not based off of what is right or wrong, right? Right. So like Titus said, they have the they have the motive to come take our guns. They have the reason right now. But if they do it right now, they look like the bad guy. So what they have to do is have it so that you are willing to give your gun away due to fear that you are unsafe because you own a gun. The only way to do that is to get gun violence to rise. The only way to get gun violence to rise is to normalize it. You put it in movies, you 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 get big cases like the Retton House case, and you let him off on murder because he was self-defense. He was defending his he was defending himself. What else could he have done? Now, meanwhile, a person like myself back in 2006, who you know had you know had a, had a, an assault chick case to where it was technically self-defense on my end, but I still get charged with assault because that dude got hurt. Because <coughs> you know you don't you don't get to you don't get to have self-defense unless that person injures you by shooting you or hitting you with an object above the waist. So it has to be deadly. I can shoot you in the leg and you have to run away and call the police. That was the law back then. Right. Suddenly right. now we're in a world where no matter what that they do to you, as long as they threaten you, you can shoot them. In 10 years, people are going to be so scared to own a gun because now they're going to feel as if everyone's just going to be out to kill me. You could die at any second. Everyone's got one. We got these rabid, vicious firearms. Oh, my gosh. I, I watch the next step is they're going to start letting felons own guns. They're going to start giving felons their rights back because really, it really it's, it's fucked up that they lose their rights for the entire time. You should only lose your rights for while you're incarcerated and while you're on parole, just like a person that's that like myself that has youthful offender status. You know what I mean? Cause my record is sealed and all that type of shit. I was under 18 shit happens. 
you know, but no one, you should always have your rights. You should have the right to vote everything. As soon as that happens, you're going to start seeing a lot more armed robberies, murders, mass shootings. They might be even lining us up for a purge. So I want to piggyback off that question, uh, off of that statement, because I, while I do agree with you, I agree that, that youthful offending felons, like in their younger day, kids who made bad decisions, by me, you know, I agree with that. They should get their rights back. I don't think it's wise to give every single felon a gun. Do you no, know no, what I'm, I mean? I'm not I saying giving them their, their guns. There's a lot of other rights that you lose also just besides guns. Like they can't vote and shit like that. I don't think, right. I think, I think everyone should be able to vote. Even felons? Yes. Because the things that politicians, the, the, the same things that politicians go and vote on also affect these felons. Like, yeah. shit. If you have a prison in your town, every single one of those felons go up against your po- your, your 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 um population. All of them. Yes. So you get taxes do. for them, you get tax revenue for it, everything. They should also have a right to vote. They should have a say to say say who who's who's their leader also. You know what I mean? Cuz otherwise right. otherwise it's just it's literally just modern day slavery. Cuz that was literally the loophole when we abolished slavery. Was that as long as you are free, as long as you're not arrested. Because even in slavery days, that's 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 where a majority of slaves actually were coming from, was through the justice system. Someone would get arrested for something and then they would charge you and then they would, you know, you're instead of sending you to a prison because they didn't have those. They sent you to a plantation. Right. And you'd work off your. So, yeah. So if Pat committed murder, Pat would be a slave. Because he would also get sent to a plantation. See, these are the little things that they don't want, want people to know. They're always hiding some shit. I, I agree with you in terms of youthful offending, minor things. I don't feel like if you're convicted of murder, if you're like serious crimes, I, I don't. I, I don't want to say you no longer fit into the society. But like, I mean... We all feel the same way. Murderers, rapists, pedophiles, right? I don't think they should have voting rights. Just me. Yahweh presented the mark, put the mark on Cain for a reason. It wasn't to punish Cain. It was to, it was to protect him so that no one would take recourse upon his actions because that's not our job, right? Because Cain killed Abel. So he put the mark of Cain on eight on, on Cain to protect him from everybody. So by it, it, as little as 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 a thing as it is to just take away your right to vote, you know what I'm saying? It's still not our responsibility universally. Like I feel you, bro. I have those same emotions as you do. Like a fucking pedophile, you are worthless. You are underneath my feet. You deserve to fucking die. But unfortunately. It's not up to me to decide that. It's not up to me. I don't have the ability universally from the great, from the creator to do that. That's all I'm saying on that one. So Sharia law, right? Say they brought back the firing squad, right? Or I guess a simpler way of asking you is, so you don't believe in the death penalty? No, I don't think, I don't think, I don't believe in the death penalty. I believe that because... The death penalty is just going off the same assumption that everyone is evil internally, which that's not true. There's no baby that is that comes out of a mother's womb and says, that is an evil fucker. You know what I mean? Right. I got four kids. You got three kids. You know it. When those babies come out, they're not looking evil. They may look weird. Like JJ looked like Bowser from the fucking Mario movie back in the day. They look weird, but they don't look evil. You don't get an evil feeling. Babies will literally, just like a dog, tell you that this thing is evil. They won't want to be around it. They'll cry. They'll feel uncomfortable. So we have the innate nature to be good. Yeah. With the right programming, everyone's able to change. Everyone. I wouldn't. Maybe not programming, but maybe reforming. Whatever word you want to put on it. Rehabilitation. 
rehabilitating. That's like all right. Um, what I believe it is, I don't don't quote me on the exact country. It's either Finland or Sweden. I believe it's Sweden. Um, they do not believe in life sentences. Everyone has has a has a date to go home. So what yeah. they so what they do is instead of putting you in a prison cell and locking you up all day, is they put you in your own apartment. They have apartment complexes that are the prisons, and the prison guards stay outside. They come in, they do their searches. You know, you're on camera, shit like that. But you yeah, have an geez, apartment. Yeah. It's it's like it's like an adult living dorm, pretty much. You know, you all got your own little apartment, your own little space that you got to go to after lockdown, but you cook your own food. You all live together. You can go to work. Shit. They got one prisoner that he wakes up every morning at five o'clock, goes to a real fucking job that he gets paid for, like making like seventy five, eighty thousand dollars a year. Goes back to the prison every night, like five, six, seven o'clock and then locks down and does the same thing over again. While the show was airing, this man looked at the camera and said, well, I got to go back. I got to get changed. They think I'm going to back to work, but I'm really going on a date. As long as I'm yeah. back before lockdown, they don't care. I just seen that episode, bro. So you know the prison I'm talking about. That, yeah, shit, yeah. that shit to me, as a person that was in prison, like the amount of people that I know that that would completely change their life, to, to give them structure, to teach them yeah. how to live, amazing things could have happened. Dead ass. Yeah. That they is have, true rehabilitation. It is. Yeah. In America, if rehabilitation works if you if you want it to. America is not rehabilitation. They don't worry about rehabilitating you. They nope. they worry about making you worse. Well, how how can I torture you mentally? Literally, uh, uh, there's a there's supposed to be a law that there's no supposed to be no inhumane treatment, right? Locking someone in a cell for 24, 23 hours a day would nothing just the walls and that's it that's that's torture bro torture within within a week you you literally start to go crazy you start to hear voices especially if you don't have any type of stimuli like a book or whatever like i was literally talking to a person that wasn't there for a week until the until i finally got a ceo to give me a book that book is what broke me out of it the book is called the giver for anybody out there Like that right there, my man, like we torture people in this country. We make yeah. things worse. I feel like I'm ranting. No, you know, bro, I feel like I completely feel like. So. Minor offenders, I feel minor offenders, we should be doing everything we can to give them the type of rehabilitation that show does. Like Sweden, Germany, uh, uh, Austria, like teaching, making chefs out of people, actually giving them skills to actually be productive members of society. I truly feel that is what we need to be doing. I, like, I, I consistently say rehabilitation works if your country wants it to, and our country doesn't. On, at the same time, I also feel like if you are just sick in the head and something is wrong with you, where you just commit heinous crimes on a consistent basis because you enjoy it, you deserve the type of torture our country gives you in the prison system. So Those I people feel are like that. Those people are like that because they were they were they grew up in that torture. Well, you know what? People, I just feel you guide your own destiny. We have free will. You can yeah. choose to be a psycho and enjoy it, or you can choose to get it right. And we all, we've all been there where we could have just fucked up. We chose to get it right. But see, so, what yeah. you're not, well, the one thing I think you're not really looking at it like this is all three of us, right? Anybody, even your baby mama, we are all literally one swing away from being a quote unquote serious offender you hit someone the right way and they fall over and they hit their head on something and they die you are now a murderer you are now going to be considered upon society a heinous person but overall that. you're not really a bad person you just had those moment of glitches i get you're talking about like psychopaths like ted bundy shit right. like that 
I still yeah. think that to a certain level, those people are mentally ill. They don't belong in a prison. They belong in a mental institution, which is a whole different type of torture. But they do they really, though? Do they really need to belong into a mental institution? I mean, if the whole pro- guy, if, if the whole point a repeat sex offender who's raped numerous women, do you think he has that ability to just say, you know what, I'm going to go with the flow because I hear if I reform and show that I can make promise and I'm a good changed man, that in a couple of, not not too far down the road I can go do the same thing over and over again because it's a broken system we've explode, ex, ex, experienced it. But if somebody's that mentally ill. How is it beneficial for us as taxpayers who pay these people to stay in these prisons and get better treatment than we do? How is it those people? They don't they don't get better treatment than we do, though. How, how do how what justifies them still being here? What is their purpose at that point? Like I or said is earlier, it because, is it because we're, we're not the ones that could be the we're not the judge of that? So That's therefore, exactly we don't. I, in my opinion, our, our job, right, like I said, to make the world a better place, how are we healing them by killing them? If, if our life is a science experiment by God, why do we just destroy his experiment? It isn't like I, all I'm saying is maybe there's some twisted fucking way, like fucking warp thinking way that it's actually our job to fix these people. But instead of us fixing them, we just continue to do the same things that caused that person to exist. That's what I like. I think I think instead of just eliminating the person, maybe we should focus on killing the, the main cause. You can't help some people. I feel I like, look, no, no, I'm with you. You can't help some people, but, but what you can help is that person before he becomes that person. That's what we're lacking. We, we have, we have built a society that just keeps on creating psychopaths. You have people come from the best of families and sit. I, I don't, we'll never agree to disagree on it. I don't think because I, I certainly feel some people just like our government, our government. If, if we could prosecute our government, how would you go about it, Joe? If we could prosecute our government, how would you handle it? In a, in a, in a, in a wise vocabulary way, obviously. I'm, I'm, I mean, I guess this is where the, the cynical part's going to come out of me. There is no true, there is no true way to prosecute your government. The only way to get out of the way that we're in right now is with war and bloodshed. Is to physically like, remove them. Yeah, yeah to physically uh, yes. remove them. Right, but, right. To physically remove them, Joseph. Do you feel they need to be physically removed, or are we no one to judge for all of their wrongdoing? I'm going to have to stick with my beliefs and say it's not my place to judge. It is my place to make the world a better place in the way I can. The way to do that is to remove them. I don't have that power. Right. But we do, though. We do have that power at the end of the day. And we got to be willing to say, hey, you know what? That ain't cool. It's time to stop. We got to be willing to do it. But that makes you no. But that makes you no better than all those people on death row. Yeah, but uh, that but, makes you no better than all those people on death row. Murder is murder. Murder is murder, right. bro. What what is the definition of murder? Taking I mean, another I mean, life, right? We're talking about murder. At the, they're murdering. The, like, well, okay, at the end of the day, okay, not at the end of the day. At some point, we have to say, "Hey, God, be with us." And get the job done instead of sitting here waiting on them to get it done. Because you know why? When you sit there and do that, at the end of the day, when it fails, you got someone to blame it on. And, and you still just get to keep your faith in God while everything around us falls to shit. I, know, that me, that's what that's a lot of those me. people on death row did. That's what I'm um, just saying. That That's what a lot of those people are like. A lot of those people on death row, a lot of those people that commit heinous crimes that have like true mental illnesses. They think that they're doing it for the grander purpose. So doing nothing is the way to go. Just do nothing and have faith. No, man. Well, that's not at all shit. what I said. I'm going to keep on beating this drum. The only way we do it is we beat it at the, at the root cause. We have to change our children in the way they view the world. 
That's the only way you change the world is by changing the children. I agree with that. I agree we've got to change the children. So but they're coming for our children at the same, you know, they got to go. Joe. They can only get your children if you let them. I agree. Prime example, the way they're going to get these children nowadays, that fucking Oculus, that VR headset that they came out, that's that you have to run through Facebook. That's how yeah. they're going to get your children. I refuse to buy my son that. That's what he asked for for his birthday and Christmas, and he is not getting it. He's going to be very disappointed. It's not because it's fucking four hundred dollars. It's because it's because I don't want my son to be fucking brainwashed more than he already is. You already have virtual reality. You have a video game. Hold up. Wait a minute. Pat's got some shit to say. Can I get a motherfucking moment of silence for this small chronic break? You guys aren't feeling safe yet. You can catch us all out on TikTok. This is DJ What You Said. 360, what DJ What You Said, 365, DJ say, DJ What You Said 2.0, and DJ What You Said crew. <laughs> Down on the said. bottom, we got Big Pat 007, and I am safety under media, uh, underscore meeting. <laughs> this was your chronic break, sponsored by High Times. Buffalo Bills. That's right, Buffalo Bills. What Home you <laughs> I got to admit, Titus, you, looked a little, you look a little un- interested tonight. Uninterested? Yeah, like 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 you want to argue a little bit more, but you also don't want to offend anybody, so you're just kind of chilling back. Like, I'm just not gonna argue. I'm just I'm just not really gonna say it. You're just chilling. You know, I gotta say, bro, you are very observant. No, I mean, cause like, okay, so I'm learning. I'm learning how to work with others. You know what I mean? Like, I've always wanted to put a team together. Get a content, you know, my I, everything I've told you guys, like those are serious goals. So, like, I evaluate myself a lot. And, like, what things I've noticed is that, like, if I'm consistently talking, we all can't hear each other. So, I try to sit back, really hear other people's opinions. And if it's worth fighting, I'll fight it. If I feel you're stuck in your ways and you have your opinion, I'm not going to force you away from it. I'm going to stay how I feel. But some things can be left alone. I'm always going to be. I learned a in my lot opinion. listening. Like, like, there's a lot of crap you know, bro. I'm telling you, you're meant to be guiding some TV show host or something. You know what I'm trying to say. I mean, this is what it is right here. Safety meeting. Co-host the safety meeting right there. Right. <laughs> that's, cousin, that's cousin JoJo. I'm Big Pat. What you see, said. See, a lot of people out there don't know this, but one of these days, safety meeting is not just going to be a podcast. It's going to be a branding company, right? That, that's what my overall thing is. It's like gonna be, If you are a low-level creator of any type no, of sort... No. You come to safety meeting and we will help you produce. We will do whatever you need to help you produce in it. Because eventually this thing's going to grow and I'm going to find someone to know something about computers. I'm going to find something to know something about this and that. And we all going to fucking work together. And we're all going to work underneath the umbrella of safety meeting. <laughs> what you said? <laughs> China! It's a company for the people, by the people, for the people. We'll make it a, we'll make it an LLC. I don't know what that is. Licensed legal co- legal corporation. We could oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, they, I'm dead ass, bro. That's that's eventually what what the plan is supposed to be, man. Uh, ever since episode number one, Pat didn't know it, but that's always been my envision. <laughs> because this is like this has never been just about me. I've always told people like the dude that was supposed to be on this show tonight. When I blow up, we all blow up. I got yeah. boys that know how to do music. I got boys that know how to do this type of shit. So when I finally make this shit blow up, I'm gonna bring you all on. And the best gonna have to work for it, but and the best part about being real is it doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, yeah. it's a what you said. Fun and educational. That's all I'm saying. This doesn't feel hey. like work to me. This feels like I'm hanging out with my buddies. We're sitting in a circle. We're having a virtual session, an online experience. Yeah. talking about some relevant real shit and we all have an opinion about it so that's what makes it interesting because yeah, some of the your idea on this one. see what, how you feel about it so I'm thinking of one day a week probably on like Friday or Saturday me and Pat get up together he comes over to the house we chill and we go live on Twitch for a couple hours have a virtual smoke session set up a phone number so that people can call in and they can also smoke with us. What you said? Safety meeting live. What you got to ask? We'll answer anything. Because and I mean anything. Right. 
just for a refresh for if we have some new followers and and so on a safety meeting by definition is a smoking session the reason why it's called safety meetings because when i was growing up joe's growing up we were in that area where we just <laughs> said, hey you want to go smoke some pot so we had to think of code words like hey man so you want to go have a safety meeting talk about some shit like hell yeah let's go or you know hey you want to go do that thing with that stuff you don't want to talk about I just is confused. What you say? Well, you never had cold word? Oh, but I have been smoking a little bit longer. Yeah, man. He didn't smoke in his childhood, he said. Right, right. No, I mean, I tried it. I tried it in my childhood, but I didn't start smoking until right before the pandemic. They honestly say that's the best thing for you, that you should wait until you're after 18 to let your brain fully develop, and then you should start smoking pot. What you said, but personally, I feel like it, it's all depending on the person, right? Because if you have like some type of like meta, uh, chemical imbalance, like myself, not to put myself out there, but I'm gonna put myself out there like a little bit. Uh, I'm bipolar, I have ADHD, and you know, a couple other things, right? And when I was younger, like around my son's age, actually, they had me on a shit ton of medications because, like. They just, you know, they thought they all thought I was going to be the next like fucking mass murderer or some shit like that. So and I didn't like taking them. I took them all for like a week or something like that. And they like zonked me out. I didn't feel like how I felt. So I stopped taking them like my mom would give them to me and I'd go into the bathroom, say I'm getting some water and flush them down the toilet. What you say. So when I started smoking weed on a consistent basis, all that shit started mellowing out, though. I was able to focus myself, being able to find, being able to center myself. Mm. I was able to concentrate long enough to actually read a book and establish a voice. Yep. That was another thing. Cause I just got into an, uh, I just got into a long stage until I was like 14, 15 to where I wouldn't say shit to nobody, bro. Really? You weren't talking to fuck. No, man. I would just mean mug people. That's all I would ever do. That's why I got this asshole mentality, right? Because for the longest time in my life, instead of arguing with you, I'm just going to fight you, bro. That's it. I ain't got time to argue with you. I'm just going to punch you in your mouth and you're going to know I don't care. And then I can whoop your ass. So the argument's over. And then every time. How old were you? When did I grow out of when did I grow out of the whole uh, I'm not going to argue with you thing? Yeah, I'm going to just hit you stage. Um. I was for me, like, I was probably like I was probably like late teenage years, like fifteen. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. By then, by then, I I I broke out of the stage of you know I mean I'll just hit you and then I would argue with you and then if you argued argued long enough when I got to that point then fuck it we're just gonna throw hands, or like still to this day there's certain like little words like if we in the middle of an argument and you tell me to suck your dick or you call me a bitch we fighting right off the bat. Like, that's just straight how it is, bro. Like, those things you just don't say to me. Like, right. that, that shit, I ain't going to lie, is that shit is a little bit of, of prison still. Because in prison, that was a big thing. If someone called you a bitch or told you to suck your dick, you had to fight. Those were automatic fight words. So, so I was going to say in the nicest way, that's one of those mentalities you should try and let. But you already know. So that's. But no, I've you, never been I've never been locked up or anything. And I, I already I agree with the mentality. That's um, why I, that's why I bang the drum so much to let you know people can change because I'm not that person anymore. Like, yeah, I still have those little cues, but that's because I believe as men, we all should have lines that people just can't cross. Of course, like, there's boundaries, man. Like we all have boundaries. We all have like, limits. And to the point to where I don't think they should be lines. I think they should be landmines. Just blow it all up, huh? Yeah, yeah like there's certain up. things that if that if you just do, like like if you steal from me, it's over, fucking you up. I don't care if it's as simple as a fucking <laughs> a, a blunt roach out of the ashtray, like that shit is just fucked up. Because to be honest with you, all you had to do was just ask me. Yeah. Like I don't care what it is. All you had to do, if I only had one blunt left, I would have been like, I can't give it to you, but I'll smoke it with you, bro. Yeah. Same. Like, but don't steal from that me. makes sense. Like, it should be landmines, man. 
Like if people cross those lines, it should just be over with. All right. Like I guess I guess that's all depending on your own personality, right? Like because some people want to give people another chance, and I'm just yeah. not like that. If you got the tendency that you seem like you're gonna do something over and over again, fuck that shit. Like I'm like that now. I wasn't like when I was younger. I was very. I'm a very patient person. Like it really. Even now, I'm working on not being as patient. You know, because I used to give chances. Now Pat I'm just like, Fuck you. huh? Pat was a huge asshole when he was younger. <clears throat> Pat, you want to tell him yeah. a story about where you threw the random Chinese guy off the porch? Troy, as you call him. He doesn't know his real name, but he called him Troy the whole night because he had a Troy Aikman jersey on. <laughs> I was no, bro. No, you can't. You you're taking that out of context and applying it in the wrong way. That's what makes it funny. No. No, the only reason why I was an asshole is because I was hammered. There's the difference. I don't drink, so therefore, me being hammered is a rare occasion, and it's a whole different energy. You're an asshole when you drink? Not anymore, um, to be honest with you. Pat's very... I've been told, I've been Pat... told so. But, I mean, I usually... I, I don't I don't mean to be, but I'm already honest as it is, and when you put some drinks in me, I have no filter. And that's Fuck kind that. of a problem with some people. Well, me and Pat get drunk now. Pat is fucking amazing to get drunk with, dude. He brings the fucking energy. Pat will fucking be up there drunk as shit, trying to freestyle at one o'clock in the morning. Come on, Joe. Come on. It's just fucking like, uh, like, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. He even had me up there trying to rap one night. He had me thinking I could go. We were so drunk. I was like, let's go. I was on parole for that one. Hey, we, got, we got we got drunk playing the Wii playing that mlb the show oh man dude it was like 215 oh. to like 212 that was a fucking epic game bro yeah bro you ever heard of a baseball game with score 200 points that's how drunk we were <laughs> but i just to be honest with you it's like this right uh like for me when it comes to drinking i just choose not to because it just it makes me a different person, and that's that. Per, I don't like that person. That person, you know, I, like not in a bad way. I'm not always like I said. I'm not just straight up like a dick, but at the same time, you you know, I don't back down from anybody. A man is just a man. You know what I mean? We all bleed the same. I might. So the guy was drunk. Just, he had been hanging out with Pat the whole fucking night. All right. And he didn't have nowhere to go. He didn't remember where he parked his car. He didn't remember who he came with. And Pat's like, all right, bro, well, you got to go. And a guy was just sitting there sleeping. So Pat picked him up by the jersey and the belt and threw him off the porch into the river. They never seen the guy again. I throw him into the river. I threw him, threw him into the river. Don't let him lie to you. He threw him I into threw the him Oswego the River. It was the lawn. It was the river. I could have thrown him out. <laughs> So, so what happened was, right, it was my bachelor party, and I was oh, hammered, story. and so we're bouncing around, we started off in Syracuse, we ended up back in Oswego, we're down by the, down by Bridge Street, and there's tons of bars down there, fucking tore up, having a good time, and this dude, like, I guess he came with a group of people, and they left him, so he felt obligated to join our group, because I'm always approachable. So we're talking and I told him I hated the Cowboys and he should burn his jersey. And that's how the night started. And, uh, but he, he was all right though. He, he, he bought rounds, you know, he was cool. Uh, he's an Asian guy. Right. And I couldn't remember his name, but he's wearing a Troy Aikman jersey. So I was calling him Troy. So it's time to, get, you know, we get, we're doing what we got to do. So we're going to leave the bar and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking you know how drunk walking goes right it's, it's the experience right so fucking we're hauling ass so we got to go up to my cousin's house because that's where my wife is and uh it's like five blocks Sorry, that was cold. Uh, it's like five blocks up and two blocks over Try. so we're, we're walking and we get down to like we get down to like third street and i notice troy's still with us <laughs> So I'm like, hey man, <laughs> what are you doing here? What? It, so 
do you live this way? And he just kept walking. And we told him, he's like, no, nah, man, I live back there. I'm like, so why don't you go back there? And anyways, so he ended up falling us all the way back to the house. And he gets out on the porch. And this dude's fucking wasted. And I'm like, dude, I don't know where you got to be, but you can't be here. You got to go. And he goes and he fucking sits down on the porch and he falls asleep. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, this is not happening. You are not fucking sleeping on this porch because I'm drunk. OK, I'm drunk. I couldn't even tell you how much I had to drink. All right. But I can drink like a fish. I'm going to throw that out there. It's the Irish in me. Uh. And uh, he wouldn't, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, my cousin went and got him a glass of water, you know, brought him out a little water, trying to give him a glass of water. I threw a little water at him. Oh, shit, man. Like, hey, wait, welcome back. You need to go. And he wouldn't go. So I stopped asking, and I just grabbed him, and I launched him off the porch. And he, he laid there for a little bit. You noticed what he did there? I can't believe you fucking threw me. <laughs> and then he left. But it got to that point, and I had to throw an Asian man off the porch. He's lying. That's why you I don't see what he did there, right? The part where he threw him into the river, instead of actually throwing him into the river, he just conveniently splashed him with water. <laughs> <laughs> you did do that. You did curve water, bro. That's funny. You got any China, funny drunk stories, bro? Is guilty. But, but that's why I don't drink. I just don't like to. I like having control at all times because as I feel as a human being as it is, I'm already kind of complicated. So you throw in alcohol and I lose a little bit of that control. I just don't like that person. You ever that done person, mushrooms? It's too truthful. But Well, I think it's very mature that you know that you can't handle your alcohol and you don't drink. I think that's good. Because there well, are some people don't, always don't tell me. Thing, don't get it twisted. We all just, I can't. Yeah. You know, but I can't just have a six pack. You know what I mean? I can't just have... No, order. you're saying it changes yeah. you. It makes you a different person. Right. Hey, well, once it's on, it's on. That's the listen, thing for me. Me, uh, me and Pat will buy one of those big bottles of Jack, right, for the two of us. And it will be gone by the time we're finished. Completely gone. And that makes you both mean? Uh, oh, God, no. Bro, I am the best person in the world to get drunk with. I am oh, everyone's okay. best friend. I am like I am. <laughs> I am the most unassholeish person in the world. You're a friendly drunk, Joe. Oh fuck <laughs> yeah, bro! I'm I can cry. Really I, why? That. Why do you really think is. that I'm so good now at talking? All that I've done is just clicked into inner drunk Joe. Right, <laughs> like I'm not drunk right now, but I just I just think about what drunk Joe would do to get to. In the conversations with people. Because I'm the guy, when I go to the bar, I just get in conversations with random people for like fucking an hour. And it'll be like, they'll, I will change that person's fucking life. I don't know how many times I've done that in a bar. If I could take my own advice, I'd be a fucking billionaire. Drink of choice. Drink of choice? Currently has been uh, Southern Comfort. Really? Because like... Like Pat said, I like to be in control. And when I drink Jack, after about like, you know, 10 shots, I tend to like, I, I remember what I did the next day, but while I'm doing it, I just don't really care. And I don't really, you know, I'll do something now and I'll forget it in like 10 minutes. But the next morning, I remember everything. And it's like, damn, why did you guys let me do that? Hmm. That's fascinating. But with Southern Comfort, because it's only 70 proof, I can sit there, drink like a half a bottle of that, and you sit here and have a conversation. You wouldn't even know. Half a bottle? I can, uh, I can do it. Like, I guess I'm a very light drinker. Like, I'm I really have a beer or uh, like uh, gin, and, gin and tonic, gin and water. Well, because this is just to be curious, because this has a lot to do with drinking. How, how big are you? How tall are you? Six foot. 220. Like, so you're about my size. You should be able to drink the same, bro. I throw up everywhere, bro. Promise. Oh, like, I, see, I like I ain't gonna lie to you. If I get that drunk to where like where I'm like swerving when I'm walking and shit like that, before I go to sleep, I make myself throw up because I don't want to wake up in the morning with the shits. Yeah. I'd rather bro, I'd rather like, puke while drunk than wake up while the shits. 
I like Jack and Coke, gin and tonic. Uh, oh, if we're going to talk all time favorite, Jack and Coke is my all time favorite. Yeah, Jack and like, but like, man, like the only time you, you'll ever catch me like slipping up and getting drunk is like when I went to Reno. I've only done it twice. I went to Reno and I was drinking Scooby Snacks and I was playing. I was balling, bro. Uh, I was winning. It was actually exciting. No BS. And uh, I was, no, never done that. But I was throwing back <laughs> Scooby Snacks and stuff and I ended up throwing up. Like, so like, I'd rather smoke, to be honest. Casually, I could sip like two or three drinks with you. I think, well, I beyond think, that, I think he's just unexperienced, Pat. What's what's Scooby Snack? I'm curious. Uh oh, it's so good. It's sounds like something with like ginger snaps and shit. It Serenity knows everything that's in it. I don't remember, but it's I, I had like 10, 12 of them. No BS, just playing balling. Um Irish, Irish whiskey. Bailey's white uh, white Russian. Have you had a white Russian? Oh yeah. Yeah, those we were throwing those back. I can't okay, be yeah. Harry. So uh, other than that, uh, uh, oh, and Patron, every every flavor, Patron out. Smack it. Harry thing down brought me you. back to it. I was dead serious yesterday when I told you it would make you go instantly viral if you filled your bathtub up with with pudding and went swimming. I sent it to oh, you like are we, I, yeah, I sent I said that like four times in the fucking text message yesterday. You were serious? I'm dead serious, bro. Think about it, man. You fill the you fill it up with pudding of whatever flavor you want, and you just sit there and say a bunch of random Bill Cosby lines about it's pudding time and shit like that. And that shit's gonna go viral, bro. Joe, you're right. <laughs> Like I was dead serious. I was high when I thought of it, but no, bro, that I'm, I'd sat there laughing for like ten minutes just thinking of it. Because you're an electric person, and you would find a way to make it fucking hilarious. <laughs> Feeling, how would I even do that? You make hey, a pudding bro. and put it in the in the bathtub, bro. Like, or buy no, a bunch no. of pre-made pudding. That one video he made where he walked outside and fell down the stairs, bro. I'm not gonna lie, I laughed so hard I peed a little. I swear to God, <laughs> that shit had me bawling. Cause you know how many times I fell down the stairs like that? Cause you know, I'm used to the snow, but it'll still catch you from time to time. Yeah. You guys got a, you guys got snow outside right now? No. Yeah, we don't either, man. We had some for like two days and then it was gone. But I guess we're supposed to get pounded by the end of this weekend. Damn. Well, I, I went in last night. Huh? I, I'm trying to do everything I can to prepare for it. I'm about to go back down to Cali and get my car on like the 12th. I got to switch the tires out on that thing. Everyone's snow tires, change. snow right. tires, change, change the game or else you're going to get stuck a lot <laughs> or at least get a brand new pair of all seasons. Yes, that too. As long as, as long as they take care of the roads, you should be all right with new all seasons because snow tires, you got to buy different rooms. This is going to sound weird. Tires. Um, I found during the winter times that these things are good to keep in your car, especially if you live out in like country road areas. Um, a shovel, a small little shovel, not nothing like huge, something like small, like a camping shovel, something small that you can get up underneath the car with. Um, kitty litter. Okay. okay. Waterproof matches. Or, yep, something like that. And, it's going to sound strange, okay? A candle and a soup can. All right? For, for the, the candle and the soup can is for those areas underneath the car that you can't really reach. So you light the candle, you put it in the soup can, and you stick it in the snow, and it melts the snow around the soup can. Okay. Empty, an empty soup can. Soup can. Okay. Pat's thinking. I've never heard that before. So I'm just really? processing it. That's all. Uh, I mean, I don't do it myself personally because I don't ever get that stuck. But if you live in an area where the snow is really bad, I would carry everything, especially if you can't get like waterproof flares. 
because a flare would work also. Just something to melt the snow to help you be able to get yourself unstuck. So stock up on flares, Joe. These are excellent ideas, man. No, 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 I don't think I don't. I wouldn't stock up on flares. So I plan on getting stuck, but kitty litter, kitty litter helps because you throw it underneath the tires to help you get grip. Okay. Wow. So I could get stuck in the snow, is what you're saying? Yeah, because because the snow will cover up ice, right? So you'll park your car. And it'll be sitting there, and the snow will start to melt, and you'll get the next thing you know, because of the way of the car, you're just sitting on straight ice. So you go to pull off, your tires are just spinning because they have nothing to grip to. Damn. Damn, think about that. All right, so always park where I don't get stuck. Always park where it's shoveled, pretty much, if, if that, that's the case. Always plan, if, especially if you leave early in the morning like I do. Because I leave, I leave my house every morning. So in the winter, like five twenty, um, just plan on shoveling. Oh, damn, got it. Plan on shoveling every morning. Pretty much, man. Especially sometimes, as, yeah. sometimes if it, if you there's a certain part of section of winter where it just seems to snow every day. And it'll snow every fucking night. So when you wake up, there's just snow there. And sometimes it's fucking like a foot of snow. Dead ass. So would it be wise to put kitty litter down ahead of time under my tires? No. 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 When you get in and you notice you can't move and you're spinning, what you do is you get the kitty litter, take a handful, throw it underneath all four tires. And like, I mean, a nice, decent amount, like. So that way when, you know, you pack it underneath the tire a little bit. So that way when you start to roll, it spins it up underneath her and boom. Only when you have to. Yeah. Not just because. Yeah, only when you have to. When, when you're spinning it and you're rocking it and it won't go nowhere. Because it's called rocking, right? What you do is you get it going really fast and you stop and you slow down and you boom, 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 boom. You know, you cause the car to rock back and forth and eventually you break out. Snow driving is fun, bro. I'm telling yeah, you, first time, first time it snows really well, and you see an open parking lot, and there's no one in that parking lot, and there's no tracks in the parking lot. You go in that son of a bitch, and you get you get going like 20, 30 miles an hour, however fast you want, just not really fast, and you pull that motherfucking e brake, bro. Fuck yeah, ride of your life. Hell yeah, I'm telling you, bro. That's telling you, you especially if you got a four wheel drive. Oh God, that's how you learn. You got to go fuck around and see what your vehicle is capable of. So in you guys sound like my brother. My brother lives I, in Utah. Dude, bro, bro, you want to know, know, know what fun, one of the funnest things to do in the summertime is? A, Get you a four by four truck. Day after, a couple days after it's rained rained a lot, and go catch you a field. Go riding through that, go mudding in that son of a bitch. Oh, hell yeah. Mudding is a fun time, bro. I have no clue, but I mean, yeah. You don't know I what mudding I'll, is? I've never done it. I've always heard about it and seen the trucks, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know. Like all this driving y'all talking about, I ain't got a clue. I don't want to flip my vehicle or none of that. I don't know how. Mm. Yeah, well, the only way you know how is just by doing it. Just like anything in life, you got to fuck up a few times. Listen, what we just told you is a life lesson, right? When it comes to snow driving. Life lesson number two, don't be an asshole. Yep. Just be patient. That's it. Just be patient, and you'll have a nice, smooth journey every single time. Always keep always but, keep a nice little car and a half, two-car distance between you and the guy ahead of you. But if somebody's being an asshole, you can't match that aggression because bad shit happens. Let them be, let them be the asshole, not you. Yep. So in if ten it, minutes, when you drive down the road, you miles an hour. You fucking do fifteen miles an hour because that's what you feel safe doing. Because it's fucking snowing. You know yep. what I mean? And when you see Don't that person in a ditch a mile down the road, you just wave as you drive by. Yep. Be like, see, it wouldn't happen if you weren't being an asshole. I have you guys know I plan on going like 15, 20 miles when it gets bad. If it, you know, because I'm not prepared at all. 
So, well, you will be once you go to the parking lot. Yeah. Once you go to the parking lot, you will be. Because you got you to gotta know what it feels like to lose control. Because I'm going to tell you, there's going to be times when you're just doing like 10 miles an hour and you go to take a curb that you know, like, oh, I got this. And you're going to completely fucking fishtail and start spinning in the intersection. Really? Oh, yeah. Especially, especially if you don't have the right kind of cut tires on your car. Fuck welcome yeah. To the, welcome to the Northeast, buddy. Fuck yeah, bro. Snow's like pretty regular around here. Man. I've done that shit so many times. Like I've only, I've never been into a car accident because I always, you know, I mean, I learned how to, you know, drive, but <laughs> oh, man. I grew up hey, in the country you know, though, man, for, for the majority of the time that I, like when I was younger and shit before like pre-licensed days, I was in the country. I've been driving since I was fucking nine years old. Like I learned how to do a lot of shit. I'm going to figure it out. So I need to go get a truck or something. I mean. No, man. No, you don't have to. I'm just saying it's fun. Just get you a bag of rock salt. A big bag. Five pound bag. Keep that in your trunk with your shovel. Uh, Your jack, obviously, for if you got to change the tire. Nice little four-wheeler. Snowmobile. Straight. You'll be all right. Snowmobiling is fun too. And remember, right. man. You got your so, so she can get behind the wheel, and you can push. Oh, no. Yep that yeah, that is a very big thing, too, bro. Man, I I broke the fender off our car one year. Right, it was fucking like negative twenty outside, and we got yeah. stuck in the driveway. And I was trying to push us out. And Erica's gunning it, and I'm sitting back there pushing, and I got the car going, and I slipped, and I fucking barely touched the fender, and it just snapped off because it was so cold. You know? <laughs> All right. I'm trying to figure out when I come down to New York, because I'm like, come on, these coasts. Now I got to go see it all. So is New York a very totally city? State, whatever. New York like, City or New York State? Because there's a difference. Coming to you guys, because I don't know the difference. I mean, it all depends on the way you go, because you could go the highway or you could go the throughway. The throughway is tolls, and then the highway is free. Yeah. When you go in, when you when you go into GPS, when you go into Google Maps, you can uh, use the filters. And you can put a route for no tolls. And it'll give you a toll-free route. Sometimes it's country roads because sometimes that's the only way to take. But I Googled where you live, right? Or not Google. Yeah, I Googled it so to see the vicinity. And since you're right there, you'll basically go north straight into New York and get up on, on the throughway in Buffalo. And it'll take you right to Syracuse. Oh, so, so I'll go through Buffalo. Yeah, I'm trying to see where Josh Allen be playing the rock. Bro, it's a beautiful area. It's a beautiful area. I don't like that area. It's great. It feels like it's one of those areas that feels like the community owns the stadium. Wow. Buffalo. Everyone uh, I've ever met from Buffalo has been a real Nick asshole. What's the drive like, Joe? Is it like, is it just... I don't know. Is it scary roads? Is it or is it like straight? Like just I mean it all depends on which way you go. Like if you go the way Pat Pat mentioned, going the throughway, it's all like just it's all just the highway. If you go the country roads, fuck yeah, man. That shit's fun. You're gonna see some shit. You'll see Amish people riding down the fucking road on on horseback and buggy. And be honest with you, in my opinion, I've only ever drove around cross country from here to Florida. And in my opinion, the best way to see it is taking the country roads. That's the best way to see to see America. Because that's how you see how Americans really live. Yeah, you may have to go 45, 35, 50 through some of these towns and shit like that. But in my opinion, it's worth it sometimes, especially if you're only taking a, a short five, six hour drive. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, in my opinion, that shit's worth it. Got it. Yeah, because I'm trying to come see it. And then I want to see, uh, where's Times Square? How far are you from Times Square? About the same distance it is to get to your house. Just in the opposite direction. We're about six hours, six, right? About six and a half, five hours away from, from New York City. Depending on where you go. Because we're about three and a half, four hours away from Philly. Oh, okay. It's like, uh, yeah, you get to, yeah, about five hours we'll get there. Not bad. So it's like driving to Los Angeles for me. Man, what well, I'm right. trying to do. I just you would never catch me go to New York City, though. I'm good. It's too many uh, people. You don't go to New York? It's too many people, bro. Too many people in one area. Fuck all that shit. Like, they ain't got nothing I ain't got here. I got pizza here, too. Fuck that. It's testing grounds. No thanks. That, too. Testing grounds. Think about it. Anytime something big or crazy usually happens in the world, it has something to do with North or New York or, or California, right? Yeah, usually. To sound like Pat for a second, the most beautiful part of New York State is upstate New York. It really is. It's the most it's the most environmentally magnificent uh, piece of, of God's green earth that you'll ever see. People come here in vacation during the fall time because of how it looks. <coughs> is it crowded? God no. Not at no. Bro, it's the next like, time okay. The next time we're on FaceTime, I'll I'll go out during the day. I'll go outside and I'll walk around. I live in the I live in the inner city, and I'll show you what 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 it what it what it looks like. Like there's all the houses are close and shit like that, but it's not as bad as you would think. Especially up this way, it's we're not living like in projects on top of like we have projects and shit like that. I could take you to areas that are projects, but. New York. New York City. If it wasn't so expensive, man, I would love to live in the, uh, in upstate New York. But it's just too fucking expensive, man, and too fucking cold. It makes me want to move to Florida every day during the winter. Then you get to Florida and you realize that sucks, too. Why does Florida suck? Florida, Florida, Florida. Yeah, but see, I'm all right with that. It's just too hot. I'm all right with that because, see, I get sick when it gets cold like this every year. Think about it, Pat. From the moment it starts getting cold outside, I, I instantly I start getting chest colds, head colds until it goes right back to springtime. And then I'm good until the end of fall. I get sick. I do. I'm, I'm always I'm pretty much always sick during the, during the winter time. See their see their chest <coughs> chest cold <coughs> COVID <coughs> or <coughs> sinus infection. <coughs> sinus infection is more from work from welding from the fumes and shit like that coming up underneath the hood. That should have given me a sinus infection real quick. All right. What if this is out of left field, but it just hit me? <laughs> what if the purpose of mass shootings as a whole is nothing more than to mind fuck society into giving up their guns? Like that's only it's only intent, and they'll do whatever they have to do to sell that narrative. Nothing more, nothing less. And the people selected are the people that have been selected to do that. No matter the age, no matter the color, it doesn't matter. No matter the religion, no matter the, it doesn't matter. They've been selected for it. The Truman this is Show. Why I love this show. The Truman Show. This Think is why I love that, that show. This, this show, bro. We just went completely full circle. We started out talking about school shootings. 
got safe, started talking about real life shit, bullshit. And just based off of me synopsing that Titus over here is not feeling the same energy. It's not really trying to argue with people. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, we started talking about real life. Pat being an asshole when he was younger. Me, me, me mugging people, you know, fuck Tom Brady. And then right fuck back Tom to, Brady. you know what? This is why school shootings happen. Pat's been thinking about it the whole time. He's a fucking genius. And I would agree with that opinion on the on why. I don't know if it's right. I don't know what is right. I only feel it's right in my heart. You never know, though. The narrative being pushed is you are safer without your guns. And we all see that, like you said, at the end of the day, they, their motive is to push that narrative by any means necessary. Does not matter the character. The more gruesome the character, the better the story. Like Once you have out. everyone's guns, you can do whatever you want. No. I'd like to point point? out, I've, I've talked to a friend of mine who is in the Illuminati. China. And he has let me know that they have written it that Derek Carr will have a season ending injury and the Raiders will lose tomorrow to the Washington Redskins. It's, it's written by the Illuminati. Huh? And then listen. We're going to put the Raiders aside for a second to not forget the fact that I did say the Cowboys, that Prescott, hurt his leg. He then came on back playing the best football of his life. He is set up to get to the dance. Bro, the did you see how bad he played on Monday? Bro, you did, you're going to – bro. It's you, written. There was like eight passes where the guy was wide open and he had no pressure that he just completely whiffed it. It is all designed, bro. The underdogs always win. If it ain't Derek Carr, it will be Dak Prescott. And that, I saw what you said. Dallas Derek Carr sacrificed Dallas every is going to lose that division. Huh? Either Washington or Philly is going to win that division. I've been saying it for weeks on hot takes, haven't I, been Pat? And for weeks, Dallas has been, fl- has been fucking losing. And then yeah, they, they got lucky out to play the Saints, who don't have a quarterback. The Bills, the Raiders, the Cowboys. These are all teams to keep your eye on for giving Tom Brady a punch in the mouth. And that's on what you see. Raiders aren't even in the playoffs, Hunt. You're a hater. We're there. Wild card's ours. <laughs> you guys aren't even you guys aren't even in, in the top seven right now. Or they're like I don't even think they're like top nine. Well, when we beat Washington tomorrow, where does that put us in the standings? But you won't be because there's no way that the Chiefs are going to lose to the fucking Denver Broncos, bro. Come on. You think the Chiefs are going to lose to the Broncos? Listen, no, you bro. don't. That's why That's why you don't even want to say it. I think anything is possible when it comes to the Las Vegas Raiders. We are known for this Illuminati scandal. I'm trying to tell y'all y'all ain't listening. I hear you. I mean, I've been telling him too. You got a lot of faith. He's got an Illuminati scandal that that it's all about the Bills winning the Super Bowl, though. All right. At this point, the both of you have an Illuminati scandal that is written for your team to win the Super Bowl this year. So I made up one of my own last uh, uh, Wednesday night. All right. It's in hot takes. I'll just let everyone here know. The Illuminati has written that the Washington Redskins will win the Super Bowl this year because Daniel Snyder is no longer have anything to do with the team, right? We have no name right now. They don't know what they're going to name it. They refuse to tell the fans anything. So we're going to be the underdogs that sneak into the playoffs as a seventh seed, go through, beat everybody, come through and beat Tom Brady, the paper boy of the league. Bro, what are you laughing for? We just handled the Buccaneers a couple weeks ago. Buccaneers didn't have Buccaneers didn't have any shot in that game. We whooped the Buccaneers' ass. All right, and then starting coming out on the Super Bowl, 
you don't see the Washington football team run out on that fucking field. You see them run out with their original logo, proud once again, the Washington Redskins. The Illuminati has said it. This is the country of the indigenous, by the way. We need to have them represented. That's why. Why? Why do you think the Braves won the Super? Uh, won, won, won the World Series? Think about it. The Braves won the World Series. The Braves. Tomorrow. The Braves. Tomorrow, the Raiders will give the Washington Redskins a clown sheeper ass whooping, and you could count on that. Sure, man. Because you guys, this this isn't me being a hater. This is just be me being analytical you guys have a trouble stopping the run you guys have a good pass rush i'll give you that um Great red you guys, Great and red you guys zone. can't run the ball but washington on the other on the other hand also has a great pass rush we actually have a very good defense we're like number six in the league right now overall defense um and we have an amazing run game we have a top yeah. five a top five game run game yeah I I, you know I see a lot of ball have? control. Their car can't do much from the sideline. Oh. Same problem. Same problem. Tom Brady had can't do much if you're on the sideline. You you know what problem you don't you know what you don't got that we do. It gets us wins every time, bro. Look up the numbers. We what? got that kicking game, bro. That kicking game is on point. That kicking game is what's going to We don't need a kicker. We just always proved that last has, week. Always will. Have you not that watched our game. season? I think the Redskins have proven that we don't need a kicker to win. Bro, we do. And that's going to get us there. Field yeah, goal. That's, that's no, that's what's going to lose you the game. While you guys yeah. – uh, actually, that is an actual stat. He is not lying. The Raiders are the number one team for getting into the red zone. And they are also the number one team for not scoring a touchdown and only kicking a field goal. Meanwhile, the Redskins, when they get to the red zone, they they score a touchdown. And not since tomorrow. we don't have a kicking game, we go for two. Not tomorrow. Like literally, the Redskins are the Redskins, they have a zone between the 50 yard line and like the 20 that they just go for it. If it's fourth and anything, they go for it. I think it's smart. I think the double Fuck quarterback yeah. set is a good idea. So you're going to see the double quarterback set a lot more in the NFL, and it's going to trickle down the line. Every age level is about to use two quarterbacks. Use one guy as your quarterback, one guy as your running back. You got a consistent wildcat. It's going to make defenses always be on their toes. Watch. The only way they can only way they can really do that with the way the salary cap has worked out is if they is if they eliminate it. Cause you don't, cause you got to think about it, right? If you, if you have two dual, if you have a dual quarterback threat team, they're both going to be considered a starter. So they're both going to want to get paid as a starter and right. you can't afford that. They'll figure it out. They added games to the season, didn't they? Why are they adding games? But yet when Tim Tebow was trying to run a dual quarterback offense, they thought it was stupid. No, Tim he's Tebow talking about, trash. he's talking about two quarterbacks. He's talking about like what they do with Derek Carr and Mariota. Because like but, but well, they honestly, they do they, they do a smart thing. Like once they get inside the five yard line, they put Mary. New Orleans did it. And run. New Orleans did it. Yeah, with Drew Brees and and, and uh, Tatum Hill. Tatum yeah. Hill. And 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 they got and the only way they can continue to do it is if Drew Brees uh, retired, because they could only afford to pay one starting quarterback. Taysom Hill's the Taysom Hill's the one getting paid twenty six million dollars a year, and then they had but James after the starting. Line. Going down the line, they're going to find a way to implement that. It's the new thing. Because if you think about it, the NFL now is very identical. Defenses know exactly what's coming when it comes. So it comes down to who's the bigger man, right? So you got to find a way to keep it interesting. That's why they took out the kickoff. That's why they're making all these quarterbacks so protected. They still do a kickoff. Yeah, but it's it basically not. You kick the ball out the back of the end zone. Put the ball back at the 10 and let him kick it off like real men and go hit. Put it back. It was never at the ass not the they, they only moved it up five yards. It's a big difference. You could tell it's ugly. I don't like it. I, oh, I don't like it either. Oh, no, I'm with you, bro. I don't like it either. But, I mean, these guys could still fucking return it. 
Devin Hester, Devin Hester would still fucking return it. I'll tell you that much. No one gets a chance. Fuck it, I'm going. No one really gets a chance anymore. I mean, I I'm with you. I would like to see teams run more of a dual threat offense, but I don't know. It's I, don't think, I don't think you'll never completely eliminate the teams that are like Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, <coughs> Justin Herbert. Oh yeah, you, know you I mean? will. Yeah, you will. Nah. Eventually. Football is a fast-paced game now. It's nothing – it's it's not really the thing anymore to sit in the box. I mean, people like to see it here and they've there. Been doing, but but see, eventually, they've been doing, it's going to go. They, they, they've always – there's always been teams that have run dual quarterback systems. Shit, that's what Tom Brady came out in college. He was never a starter in college. Even when he was, he shared time with the guy underneath him. He shared time his entire time in college. That's why. That's one of the reasons why he was a seventh, uh, a sixth round draft pick. You know what I mean? No one thought that he could do it. You know, well, shit. You always had to get pulled out in the game in big moments or at this time. And the quarterback position is going to a mobile quarterback system. It why you will that I agree with quarterback position. It'll come. That I that I, think- I agree with, except for the fact that they're trying to set it up for Mac Jones to be the new face of the league. Even down to the fact where Mac Jones' new trademark is going to be MJ10. All right. You're right. The New England Patriots, kind of like the New England Patriots when Tom Brady um, was drafted or became starter, was were struggling early and are only came back and are winning because they play pretty sound defense. And Mac Jones just plays he plays good enough not to not to fuck the game up. Just like Tom Brady did when Tom Brady was 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 a young player. Tom Brady played good enough that. not to fuck the game up. That's why he needed Adam Vinatieri to win the fucking the Super Bowl with kicks. But Pat's all over here confident. Oh, but but you got the Buffalo Bills who aren't even in control of that division anymore. But that's the problem. They're going to run into the Buffalo Bills because it's not the Patriots year this year. It's the Buffalo Bills year. Are you sure? Because you guys have not been looking like the Buffalo Bills. And once again, the only reason why you guys had a good game on Thanksgiving is because you played a team that does not have a quarterback. Mm. Five five takeaways? I mean... Taysom Hill. Or no, Trevor Simeon, bro. He's a high school quarterback. You guys over here talking about irrelevant teams. No one gives a damn about the Patriots. It ain't their year. The Bills look good, but they ain't finishing it off strong. Washington was never are a factory sure, bro? except on defense. The Illuminati don't give no damn about none of these. You guys teams are like you guys about. are like you guys are like five and six. The Patriots are eight and four. Way more teams are talking about the Patriots than okay. the Okay. And Cam <laughs> Newton was 15 and whatever the hell he was. Still got to the Super Bowl, got his ass whooped. Why? Because Illuminati did not touch him with the anointing, bro. No. Okay. That's, that that's that's because he's a pussy and he doesn't know how to die for a fumble. <laughs> Illuminati. Or he's just a choke artist. He ain't no choke artist, bro. Illuminati. You sure? Because one week he's coming back screaming and he's back. And all he did was pass for 75 yards. And then he comes back the next game and he loses. And then he goes back the next game and plays so horrible that he's back on the bench. The man went hey. nine for 23 for 63 yards. Illuminati played him, bro. He so sacrificed whoever he sacrificed to get back in the league, sold out, got vaccinated. And oh. now they are slamming him. 0 oh, and 10 in their last hundred and some odd games. Or he's just washed. Yeah, he's washed. Like he, he sold out really, for no reason. He was never really that great of a quarterback. He was always a great runner. But when you want to sit there and think about as a quarterback from a pure mechanics standpoint and being able to put the ball where it needs to be when you need to, that was never Cam Newton. If he did not have Steve Smith when he was younger. People would have not have thought he was as great as he was. I agree. He got to the Super Bowl though. Because be Steve Smith, for that. Because of Steve Smith, the Steve Smith wouldn't have played through them, them injuries. They wouldn't have got to that Super Bowl. But he got them there. In that hell of a defense, that defense was f- crazy good. 
them linebackers, boy, Luke Keekley, Thomas Davis. I don't even remember yeah. who the third guy was. And then, then, then you had the pass rushers, the two big boys in the middle. Um, yeah, Josh, Josh Norman, Norman out there, there when he was when he was doing good, and they played a nice lockdown zone defense. But their problem was is they ran into Peyton Manning, and he picks apart zone Illuminati. Defenses. He picks apart zone defenses. That that's just that's just pure quarterback play, though. That's what you get when you get a guy that stands back there and he evaluates the defense. He starts to learn how to pick apart those zone defenses. Because, see, yeah, all right, think about Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is – watch watch how – watch when he when he plays. When a play – when a team plays zone defense against him and he has nowhere to throw to, he runs. Because his – because he, he, he needs there to be that – He's open because he doesn't take the time to learn how to evaluate the field because there's something about a running quarterback that they use that as a crutch. And they, instead of sitting back and just evaluating things, they just say, I'm going to go because they have that mental timer, which you should, because everyone should have a timer. I'm in danger. But you could use that ability to run around behind the line of scrimmage and evade tacklers and let your people get open. But instead, you just say, I'm going to take off. Take Aaron Rodgers, for example. Aaron Rodgers is also a very mobile quarterback. You may not think about it looking at him, but Aaron Rodgers is very fucking athletic. Yo, he just turned 38. Did you know that? Who? Aaron Rodgers. He just turned 38. Yeah, he just turned 38. All right. Why does he look older than me? I don't know. Genetics? Aaron Rodgers is a naturally talented quarterback. But he's so, not touched by the Illuminati. They Illuminati? don't like him anymore. But hold on. Dude, that's not even where I was going with it. But you look at the way he plays, right? Instead of instinctively taking off like he could when things break down, he just moves the pocket or he evades behind the line of scrimmage, allowing time for someone to get open. And then if nothing happens after that point, he takes off. That's where a lot of these dual threat quarterbacks, they miss out. When they get when they break out to the outside, instead of stopping and resetting and letting people get open, they just take off. They just go. They just go to the sideline as far as they can go. And then if they and then if they get to the point where they're about to run out, they just fuck it. I'm gonna go. I got a lane. I'm gonna go. More big plays happen when you stop and reset your feet. Question. Uh, what the hell did you just eat? A muffin. Blueberry muffin. He just ate just the top off the muffin. That's savage. <laughs> See, what, what happened was... Uh, I just happened to look down and I'd seen this thing and then it disappeared. And I was like, what was that thing? I and Doug Flutie one. was another good one at that too. Cause Doug Flutie was another good dual threat quarterback. A lot of people don't think about same Flutie thing played. with Warren moon. They were very, yeah. good. they were very good at breaking the pocket, resetting their feet and letting their receivers do their job. Cause once you reset your feet, you kind of start to notice, Oh God, this guy back this way is breaking open. Cause he started to work back towards me. I can launch it and hit him in the middle of the field. Donovan McNabb. McNabb was another good one for that. McNabb was, you know, probably the best example of a dual threat quarterback because he had the ability to break you off for a 60 yard or he did, but he didn't want to. I'm going to use my ability just to get away from you so I can throw it to my guy deep. I like seeing a quarterback that could get out of the pocket and do something else. Oh, no, I like seeing it too. It's exciting way. as fuck. But it only gets you so far. That's why Lamar Jackson, when he gets so far deep in the playoffs, he struggles. Yeah, he's not a yeah. He's not accurate. Well, it's not even an accurate part. After a certain after a certain while, he gets predictable. Right? Everyone plays to a tendency. So if you get him to roll out to a certain direction. He doesn't even attempt to throw. He just runs. 
So, and once yeah. you get deep into the playoffs, these teams, they're good, and they pick up on shit like that. So is he going to win them a Super Bowl or he gets straightened out of there? I think – I think he eventually might make it to a Super Bowl, but I don't think he ever wins a Super Bowl. Not this year. Yeah, no, they don't have a good enough defense yet. Those yeah, think about it. It's the Ravens. For them to win the Super Bowl is the Ravens. They need to have a dominant defense. That's why I say this about the Redskins. For the Redskins to ever win a Super Bowl, they have to have a dominant offense. Uh, not offense, a dominant run game. Every time. Every single Super Bowl we've ever run has been due to a dominant run game. And a stout defense doesn't have to be elite, just stout. I don't think you'll ever see a Super Bowl, but um, I do think the Raiders and the Bills. I've already yeah. seen. My, I've I've actually seen my team win a Super Bowl in my lifetime. Have you? Bam! You know the Illuminati didn't have us picked against the Buccaneers that year. Okay, so uh, Tom Brady was. The new gunslinger. Yeah, I didn't have you guys picked against the Buccaneers that year, anyways, either. I made 50 bucks uh, that year. Huh. <laughs> well, I don't think you your team will ever see a Super Bowl in your near lifetime. However, the Raiders are soon on track to see the next five. No, that's not gonna happen. Interesting. It's getting closer. you know, after these next three and a half. Watch, oh, we're gonna go you know through, bro. We're gonna win. We're gonna win two. We're gonna yeah, go. We're he's gonna he's go trying to get that. people to forget about your guys' record of winning, uh, of losing four straight Super Bowls. They're gonna lose five straight. Heard it here on safety meeting, people. The Raiders are slotted to lose five straight Super Bowls from super fan DJ. What you said, got it on tape, bro. China, bullshit, son. Fucking bullshit, man. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> One way or the other. So this has been fun. I'm going to ask the question of you guys feeling safe yet? What you said? Did y'all notice the cape? Your boy well, I, got it. I, I did. Um, Very American. I wanted to pick on you because we have this guy. <laughs> we, have this, we have this guy who walks around our neighborhood who is a, uh, how do I put this politely? He's a tweaker. And he walks around in a uh, in a British flag when he's really like when he's like he, he's tweaking out. He's high as hell. He puts on his British flag and a like eye covering mask that looks like he made it out of like a tube sock. And he just walks around the west side. I call him Blank Man. Blank Man. Yep. You've never seen that movie with Damon Wayne's. What you said? First black superhero, man. You better stop, evil bro, door. It's fucking hilarious, bro. If you want a, a funny movie to fall asleep to at night, Blank Man. I will look into it. It's one of those. Blank I mean, Man. Yeah, I mean, you were probably. I mean, I was like 10 when it came out. So you were probably like five, six years old, man. So you not knowing it makes sense. We need to shoot some skits. I mean, Joe, do you know how to put in like don't 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 ding, ding, type of music? Do I know how to? I mean, if you can find the music, that's yeah. How's it going again? It, it's like so. So I have this idea for like this don't, skit don't. I want to do, and I just picture Joe like like with his beard all cleaned up and like laced all back, and he's serving a serving like a vaccine on a silver platter. And it's like Kim Jong Un's face and Donald Trump's face, and then it says, "It's like, are you a cotton sheep? Yes or no?" And then when they pick, if they pick the wrong one, you just have Joe like spit out his own catchphrase and walk away. Fuck Tom Brady. <laughs> that, it comes to me. I'm telling y'all. I know it sounds crazy spitting it out like that, but like the, I write this stuff down. Like, yeah, no, that's it to you that day. It's just, and it's fun. It's like the pudding thing. Yeah, no, that's that, that's actually pretty easy to do, man. That's the same way as when um when 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 I put up the whole thing that says safety meeting and the, the screen glitches all out and you hear the glass breaking in the background. Yeah. As long as I have the audio downloaded onto the um the computer, I can put it into anything. 
All right. So really, see. really, all it is is if if you can find a song that's not copyrighted that we can use, you know, what I mean, it has to be copyright use free, or that you, one that you've created a beat or something like that, I could use it in anything. Like that's how I created the China thing, right? I I got right. your audio files. I took I I took the picture. I created the picture. I put in the words. And then I created a timeline to have the words fade in at a certain time along with the audio. Like I turned a still picture into a five second clip. What'd you say? You poppy? Yep. I did that with that one too. The new intro where it's um, moonlight over, uh, over the water. And then out of the water, you have safety meeting with Pat going. You poppy? You poppy on me? <laughs> along along with smoke filling up the screen right okay all of that was still pictures i didn't know that if any this of you guys have been on this episode, i just want to throw out make sure to hit that like hit that subscribe hit that little notification bell so when we drop a new episode of this or smoking hot takes they'll let you know so you can keep up that's right you can check us out here on youtube spotify uh, Anchor, Breaker, Podcast, oh, Google Podcast, and a couple others, man. We're out here. I don't know why y'all ain't listening to us. <laughs> what <laughs> you said? Meeting, minus the G. Remember that. Safety meeting. See, no safety G. meeting. There ain't no G in it. Safety meeting. Just, just right. a reminder. Of that. We had to drop the gangster shit at the door, so we had to drop the G. No G. What you said? I got to get my hair done. I was thinking the same thing the other day. China, bro. My head hurts. China. My head hurts too much right now to sit there and have him braid my hair, though. Yeah, I, I got to get that shit. I ain't going to lie, man. When you got a really bad migraine, sometimes that is the best feeling in the world to take your braids out. Oh. Because you know, all that tension just fucking leaves, and you're just like, oh, yes, that was it. Your hair no, is I gotta your get receptor. my hair redone. Huh? Your hair is your receptors. Hell yeah. I dead ass believe your hair is like it is in Avatar, right? Your hair is what connects you to the universe. Like the natives believe that's what that's what that's where your internal strength came from. Your connection to the universe was your hair. That's why I personally believe when I cut my hair when we first started this podcast, is why I went through that stage of all of that shit. It was because I cut my hair. I lost my connection to the universe. Yeah. I wonder what my followers will say if I cut my hair. <laughs> Boo. They would definitely notice. It'd be a shock for me because I've never seen you without it. So. Yeah. But I'm sure you're the same exact person, really. Yeah. For me, you don't even really know because I always got a hat on because I'm always outside doing these podcasts because, you know. I feel like I always look like a crazy scientist. I think the long hair goes great, bro. And bet, yeah, you always just have one of beanie. You usually have one of the thingy. The thingy is you. Right. It's not about what's on the head here. It's about the money maker, right? Well, really, he doesn't want to take the hat off because he doesn't want to show you all the bald spots. Yeah, that too. When he was a kid, we used to call him Patchy. What you said? <laughs> yo, you ever see, you, you, yo, you ever seen the video? He used to float around on Facebook a couple years ago. This dude rolled up on this kid. He was like 16, 17 years old, and he had patches all over his head. And he, called, he kept on calling the little dude Patch. And the dude... Yo, bro, you ain't going to talk to me like that. He goes, what you going to do about it? He goes, get out the car. And he's like, you ain't going to speak to me. This is my hood, bro. You ain't going to speak to me like that. You ain't going to call me. You ain't going to call me that shit. He's like, meet me at the park. Like, bro, I ain't meeting you at no park. I Like, if you, if, if you ever in an argument with somebody, this is for the listeners out there. And they tell you to meet you at another area or to hold on a second. I got something for you. They're getting ready to shoot your ass. 
All right. <laughs> so you need to either attack them now or just run the fuck away. Like, come on now. I ain't boo boo the fool. I wonder, yeah, but I've always wondered, did the guy go to the park? Because Patch looked like he was getting ready to shoot him. I've always wondered. What the fuck just happened? I got safe and just told a random story. Word. Yeah. Meet him at the park. <laughs> I'm done. That Yo. pudding thing. All right. So how do we do it? Are we doing that or what? We're gonna fill it up with pudding. Oh, we're not, it's not. It's not it. a we thing. It's not a we thing. You're gonna fill a pudding. You. With you want me to story. individually climb into some pudding after filling it up? That's that's, that's gonna be a lot. Hoping it doesn't funny. flop. That is I mean, great teamwork, Joe. You gotta. You, well, I mean, you got to put. I'm gonna share it and do what it like a son of a bitch. He wants you to join him in the tub, is what he's saying. And that's not at all what I'm saying. Oh, I'm that's what he's like saying. He no, yeah. I'm not joining you like, in the tub full of pudding. I feel like China, bro. China. But I will. I will duet the pudding while eating pudding. <laughs> the <laughs> banana. Instead of using a spoon, I'm going to use a banana. Okay, so oh my goodness! I'll do that it also, right? But like, uh, like I can't physically fit in the tub. Uh, it just doesn't work for me. Uh, and that's and that's how I'm big fat. Oof, these guys, seriously, bro! I haven't taken a bath in years because I I, I don't fit in a bathtub. Okay, okay. I'm not saying climb in the dang tub with me. Nobody's saying that. I was saying we fill this tub with pudding. Okay. Right? Is what, what I thought you were saying. But what you're saying is go get some pudding or whatever. Fill the tub with this pudding. Climb inside this tub and do whatever. Make some creative way to do it and that will go viral. Yeah. And what you do is you tag whatever pudding company you use their pudding. So that way, hopefully, they'll give you an advertisement for the pudding. With the sunglasses, dude. There's actually this thing called Amazon Associates that will give you a link that you can put in your TikTok video that people can go and they can look at said pudding that you just used. And if they buy the pudding, you get a percentage of it. I don't know if pudding is an option, but I think it's worth looking at. Who doesn't want pudding? <laughs> He's really thinking about it, dude. I, mean, <laughs> I think it's a good idea, bro. With the sunglasses, bro. I'm telling you, with the yep. sunglasses. Yep. Wearing wearing pool floaties. Because you don't want to drown. Yeah. Nobody wants to drown in a fucking tub of pudding. That would be just embarrassing. And this is 2021, and people are highly stereotypical and highly racist. So you wearing pool floaties while trying to swim in, in pudding would make sense because a lot of people are going to be like, hey, doesn't know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's right. <laughs> he's spot on. You see, like, he These are just know. honest assessments, bro. Dude, it's going to go viral. viral like, I, 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 would, I would sit there and laugh my ass off. While watching someone try to swim in pudding, I mean, I think Mr. Beast, Beast filled up a whole pool with ground. Jello once. Little, little. <laughs> right, and you just fucking dive in. It's great. Man. Worth it, man. Sit there like this, you got the glasses on. Which, like, did you with a snorkel? That... With a snorkel. You... you think you could get your hands on a water suit? And some like floppers look like oh. Scuba Steve. That's Who's Scuba Steve? Steve? You've never That's seen Big Daddy? The movie with Adam Sandler where um, he pretty much adopts a random kid, gets dropped off at his, at his doorstep, and just left with a note saying that it's his kid, that the mother died of cancer. What? Yep. I've never, I have no idea. Yep. Yep. Good one. 
And it was it was pretty much the only way he could get the kid to take a bath was to go out and dress up like this character called Scuba Steve. I'm just saying, bro, if you dressed up like a like a submarine dude, got in with a snorkel and some pool floaties <laughs> um, and the sunglasses filled with pudding, making jokes about Bill Cosby and pudding pops, I would die. I would die laughing. Fascinating. I mean, this is coming. This is coming from the guy that carried around the turkey for two weeks. <laughs> I ate with that turkey. I did a lot of things with that turkey. We went for a walk. We played football. And the JJ were out in the backyard playing catch. It's on TikTok. <laughs> I'm just I I've, I've I've also embarrassed myself for the greater cause. Hey, I rapped the other day or a week ago or whatever. See? We we've all made sacrifices. I think it's <laughs> what I'm truly trying to get at is I just think it's your turn to make the sacrifice. Cuz you didn't eat the squid. Now you got now you owe us the pudding. And I'm not a rapper by any means. I honestly Pat, I think when we get off of here, we should just both make a TikTok asking the world if DJ, what you said, should go swimming in pudding. And what flavor pudding should he use? Ooh. And could you send... I, I think, think they're like, yo, listen. I think we <laughs> should acknowledge the fact that you admire my creativity. <laughs> and I also feel furthermore that you should publicly say, dang, DJ, what you said. All <laughs> them ideas you gave me with the turkey and everything and dress and all that, that was creativity well you just Hopefully told me to get a prop. admire the fact that i am creative don't indirectly admire the fact that i am creative by asking me to hop up in some pudding and go scuba diving and furthermore i know how to swim just so you know i, can, I didn't I say you can did float. it i didn't say I, you I, would, did I just it. want to make it clear i could swim <laughs> Fact. but in all honesty you really just told me just to go get a turkey leg and then i figured out what to do with it from there right Creative, so openly say I'm creative. Don't just force me into some dang pudding like that. It's not a force. I'm just slightly suggesting that you do it. So okay. So listen, coming from a former chef, right? So if if you go to the store and get you one of them double packs of pudding, right? Either vanilla pudding, chocolate pudding. It's like a dollar twenty-five, and it makes a bowl. Right, and that bowl would be enough to fill. All, you know, <laughs> this is high. crazy. <laughs> so let's let's think about it. If you were to take and lay down, like put, man, let's say a hundred bucks would be enough pudding to fill a tub. Hundred bucks just for pudding, and that and that that would more than not only it would it would cover it, but it would be a little changing into the fact that you also got to clean it up afterwards. Right. What would, that's what I was going to ask. How would I clean that up? Uh, Joe, how does he clean that up? I mean, this is your idea. <laughs> this is it. That's what I'm saying. This is a team effort. I shouldn't just be doing it by myself. For, hey, for 14, we're creating together for 14 pounds of pudding. It is a hundred dollars. There you go. Hundred bucks. All right, and how are we gonna clean it up? Oh, how are we gonna clean the pudding up? Shop vac. <laughs> I mean, a shop vac would work, yes. And Who's then you would just have to empty the shop vac into a trash can, and then empty the trash bag. Who's bringing it? Who's putting it on the shop vac? I got two of them. There we go. Send them my way, and I'll buy the pudding. Oh yeah, that's me. That's how I am. Like, I, I see, it's a good idea. I'm gonna do the work by myself, and then post it. What the heck? I might as well just like, yeah. My wheels are turning. Okay. 
I mean, how else, how do I how else am I going to clean it up? I don't know. I mean, it's not like you could just. You'd have to use a vacuum. You'd have to. It's the only way I can think. Otherwise, it would mess up the toilet, flushing it down the toilet. Right. You don't want to do that. Okay. Okay. I mean, you could scoop it out into bags, but that's really messy. Huh? Scoop it out into bags? Yeah, but that would be messy. You'd have to use a vacuum. See, my goal is to one day have a factory like Robert Deerdeck did so that I could easily just do all of this stuff. All right, so on Reddit, this guy says, I calculate how much it would be to fill a bathtub with chocolate pudding. Uh, one person says, you need three 24 packs of instant pudding. I don't think that's right. I think that's that's way off. So would it be just dumping the packs into the tub and turning on the water and just mixing it? No, you got to mix it and then just dump it in there. I don't know. Do you have to cook pudding? I, no, but you got to you gotta mix it. Exactly. So you would just put the pudding packs in there, clog the, the drain, right? Put the pudding packs in there and then turn the water on, mix it, let it become pudding and jump in. Well, I mean, put, actually, you put you ice in it cook, to help it set. You do, gotta, you do gotta cook pudding. I thought that was just jello because you have to heat up the gelatin. <laughs> you still gotta bring it to a boil real quick while you're whisking it and then remove it from the heat and set it aside. Pour, pour it through a separate container so then it turns into pudding. Uh, so here's an idea does pudding have to sit? Because if not, why not just like show that I'm dumping pudding into the tub, let the water run, right? Because who cares? And then just climb in it and do whatever. You know what I mean? Like let, let it fill. To like... I mean, but you can buy pre-bought pudding. Like that's why I said like this place, they have uh, uh, it's a storage place, right? Chocolate pudding bulk food storage. 120 servings, so it's uh, 24 ounces. So it's about 14 pounds. No, it's 12 ounces, sorry. It's $100. So what we do is we start a fundraiser on TikTok for all your fans to donate to see you swim in pudding. And you'll do it on a live event, and you'll answer questions. That's a good idea. You might actually get, might actually earn enough money to have some pocket change. See, I was thinking more of the cleaning up the mess. I don't want the big mess of having to need a shock back or whatever to clean it out. If they donate enough money, you can just hire a cleaning crew. So instead of doing it in a tub, do it in a, like a little kiddie pool. Bam! That is actually an awesome That's idea. That's a good idea. You can fill the big kiddie pool up right up right up in the living room. And just go swimming in pudding. And then have the cleaning ladies come over and clean the pudding up. Or no, just... Cleaning ladies. I could do it in the snow. But if people donate enough money, you can hire just, cleaning ladies. So, okay. So if you put it in a little a little kiddie pool, uh, at the end, when you're all done, just drag it outside and find a hose somewhere and just spray it off and it's done. Now you have a kiddie pool. So now, 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 really, what I think we got to go across is what flavor pudding. Because I think I personally think it should be butterscotch. Because who the fuck likes butterscotch pudding? Only I mean, I do. And you're a terrorist. And you like salt and vinegar chips, so we're even. But I, I've also admitted on multiple occasions that I am a psychopath. So me liking salt and vinegar chips isn't really that bad of a thing. 
Butterscotch is totally underrated, man. That's like people that like caramel. You don't like butterscotch, Matt? I do. That's what I'm saying. It's underrated. No, I think it's fucking horrible. Butterscotch is good. I grew up on those little, you know, them little butterscotch discs like everybody else does. Those shit are banging. I'm not really big into like sweet shit. Like, I don't like chocolate. Like, I like chocolate pudding, but I don't like chocolate. I don't like the taste of vanilla. Like, if I'm going to eat candy, it's going to be like some gummy shit. Or hard candy. Strawberry, dude. Strawberry pudding. Strawberry pudding. Who likes strawberry pudding? I don't. I don't think I've had it. Gross. I don't think I have had it either, but it sounds good. It's gross. I like everything strawberry I do like. I usually get it. I don't like chocolate. You know, when I used to work at McDonald's, I used to take the strawberry and chocolate ice cream and mix that shit together. Call it a strawberry shake. That shit was fucking banging, bro. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna give uh get more back into my food stuff too. They keep sending these emails for my main account, but I don't have my main account. So it's like I guess they're taunting. I don't know how to explain it. You know how hard it was for me not to report that lady last night? Because I know she's seen my comment. What happened with that? Oh, Pat was in live with that woman that reported me. Which I, yes, I won my I won my appeal, by the way. TikTok said that it's not it's not bullying to talk about ghosts. But right. But yeah, I was in your live as a guest, and she got me that day because she was in there commenting in your live also that day. Um, said that I was bullying and then I lost my guest privileges and then me and Pat were live together and, and she was the only person in Pat's live and the only person in my live was Carrie my niece and I got another one for bullying so process of elimination it had to have been you and don't you know Pat last night I see Pat's live and it says first time live I'm like well that's a lie so I click on it and it's this chick drunk as hell talking and just rambling and talking and talking and like she's over there talking away like pat is so involved and like this is like some type you could see it in her face and she's like i don't know if pat knew this but she was like falling in love type shit and i'm just sitting there and i'm like those words are those are words of bullying right there and i just sat back and waited and she read it, and Pat read it, and you see Pat over there just laugh and smile. And next thing you know, he's in the comments, LOL. <laughs> A couple minutes go by, and Pat's just gone. Oh, my bad. My phone glitched out. Okay, you you, you felt the vibes. She's sitting yep. there making her another one. Yep. And what? what? So she just doesn't like you or something? I think it's the face. That's crazy. Yeah, you know what's fun to do sometimes though? There's this website called like uh what, what is that thing called? Omago, Omigo, Omega. Omega. Like Omega. Bro, me me and Carrie are going that shit and talk to people. That shit's fucking hilarious. It's also very scary. Don't let your kids on it. Do not let your kids on that shit. You have people beating their meat. Like that shit is gross as hell, bro. Like, but you're on it anyways. So continue. <laughs> well, because 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 that's like that's like one out of every twenty people, right? And out of most of the people you talk to, you get a fucking hilarious interaction, or you meet someone completely unique from the other side of the world and end up in a fucking twenty thirty minute conversation with some random dude in fucking Germany or India or fucking Australia. I was talking to dude, some dude in Britain yesterday. British people love me. <laughs> oh, me go, huh? I'm just saying, bro. It's it's a good way to like learn things about the world that you would have never. You get a whole different perspective because you get you get to ask people that are currently in Britain. Yo, bro, is this really true? Is this really how it's going on? Is the media lying to us? 
And a lot of times you find out that it's all bullshit. I've been actually, yeah. I'm not going to lie, I've been starting to have a really positive interaction, like a series of interactions with various people as of late. It's kind of cool. It's like chat, uh, chat roulette used to be. I don't know what that is. I'm I'm kind of new in all this like talking to people shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I said earlier, I was I was, I didn't talk to anybody for a while. So this whole like meeting people online and talking to people virtually, it's all new. Facts. I didn't even know that shit existed until like fucking three months ago. But yo, oh, really? really? Yeah. Yo, what what okay. What me and Joe, like this kind of conversation that we've been having this whole time before we we were doing this for like two years before we decided to start safety meetings. We would talk to each other just like this. Just because it was Tuesday, we would burn one room, talk about some shit. Usually have a pretty in-depth conversation. And all we said one day, you know, we should start recording these one day. And then it happened. And here we are, season two, episode eight. We don't have a name for it yet. Why do mass shootings happen? Uh, that doesn't that doesn't say anything. No, that that, that doesn't make me want to click on it. No, Sounds you got to find names that make you want to click on it. Because the YouTube's big on that, right? You got a, a you got to have a thumbnail that says. Ooh, that looks interesting. And B, you got to have a name that says, "Ooh, that that is I want I want to know something about that." Shorts, shorts is the way. I'm more of a jeggings guy myself. Jeggings? Yeah. No, like shorts. YouTube shorts. This is the quickest way to get it out there. I mean, I don't know what company makes them. They might be Wrangler or whatever, but Jiggings. You know, like leg- leggings for girl or guys. Yeah. They look like jeans, but they're really leggings. Jiggings. Pat's mom loves the way my ass looks on them. Real saggy. Looks. YouTube. Shorts. Real. Okay, I'll 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 go on YouTube and I'll search shorts, but I'm telling you, I'm not a shorts guy. I Real. like I like Actually, jiggings. I have, a, I have a fear of midgets, to be honest with you. I don't know, man. Some of the midget chicks are kind of thick. Like with two C's or just a K. I mean, like if you turn the lights off and you bend them over, you might forget that they're a midget thick. Really, like so thick. Oh yeah, they thick. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a turn on to me. Because like I'm YouTube Shorts is where you post the video because it's <laughs> publicity quicker. <laughs> yeah, I know what it is, bro. Okay, <laughs> that's oh, what shit. I was saying. Sometimes it's too easy to fuck with you, bro. I make it that way. That means got, you still have innocence, sir. I got a random question for you, though. <laughs> Father and son are driving down the street. They get into a car accident. Damn. They both get. They both sustain the same injuries at the same time. Go to the same hospital in the same ambulance. The little boy goes into the emergency room, and the surgeon comes in and says, "I cannot operate on this child." For he is my son. Who's the who's the surgeon? The father. The father was in the car, had the same injuries, went to the same hospital, was also in surgery because they went to the same hospital at the same time. Who came out? The surgeon. Yeah, the surgeon's the one that says, I can't operate on the child for he's my son. So who's the surgeon? The surgeon. Yeah, but it was also the parent of the child. Meaning that his dad wasn't 
his dad, dad wasn't the dad wasn't the surgeon. So who was the surgeon? The father. The father was also in surgery because he was also in the car accident and Great. sustained the same injuries. Hold, on. Hold up. So who's the surgeon? <laughs> Start it all over again. One more time. Father and would. son are driving down the street, okay. get into a car accident, sustain the same injuries, and go to the same hospital in the same ambulance. The surgeon comes into the little boy's room and says, I cannot operate on this child for he is my son. Who is the surgeon? Oh, the surgeon is the father of the father. No. Yeah, if you think about it. So no, because he didn't see. father he, and son are in the accident and they're both injured. And the guy says, I cannot operate on my son, meaning the first father, he can't operate on him, so therefore he can't operate. No? No. There is one like that, but this isn't that. This isn't that one. It's the mother. The mother is the surgeon. That is a riddle that also shows society's tendency to be misogynistic. We don't tend to see men as surgeons, so therefore you wouldn't think that the mother was the one on, that was the surgeon. But really, it's the only logical answer because you know that the father is also in surgery. Because if it was the grandfather, he would have said, I can't operate on this child. This is my grandson. So the mother's the surgeon? The mother's the surgeon. The one, now, the one with, with Pat's answer was a father, a son, and a grandson are all fishing. They all catch a fish. And they all put them in a bucket. They all only catch one fish, and they put each fish in a bucket. And they go home. Nothing happened to the fish. No fish jumped out of the bucket. Nothing like that. But there's only two fish in the bucket. How is that? Father, son, and grandfather all go fishing. All catch a fish. But at the end of the day, there's only two fish. Who caught the fish? The father, the grandfather, and the son. Okay. The father is also a grandfather, and the son is also a father and a son. Right? If you and your father, if he was still alive, obviously, RIP, were to go fishing, and you both caught a fish, a father, Mm -hmm. a grandfather, and a son all would have went fishing. Because he's your father, you're his son. And you also have children, which makes him a grandfather. Mm-hmm. They're just riddles that get you to think of loopholes. How many fish did they catch at the end of the day? Two. That's it? That's it, because only you and your father went fishing. Mm. I mean, really, you could think about it. You could do it with one person also. Right, because your father, in essence, would also be a grandfather, a father, and a son, so he could go fishing by himself and only have one fish at the end of the day. And you could also confuse people with the same riddle. Did you know that when you get past the ripe old age of thirty-two and further and beyond, you get to a point in your life where you really can't trust a fart anymore and that's the thing that people don't want to talk about but that's the reality um uh, and uh nobody ever gives you a warning it just happens you find out all on your own so So, here's your warning yeah when you get 32 and older just you know control yourself if it's past (laughs) seven o'clock don't eat that taco bro 
<laughs> Maybe you right. shouldn't go to McDonald's right now. Because really? it's going to come out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bro, there's been plenty of nights you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, oh God, nope, nope. That was not it. I'll be right back. I got a thick Uh-oh. shower. I'll be right back. What happened to Pat? I have no idea. But he said That's two. after 32? After 32. I don't know what it is about 32. But it's it pretty much it's that time or time period. Well, that's when my, mine happened a little early because when I was like 31, 30, 31, um, my appendix wrapped around my colon Damn. and was getting ready to burst. So I had had my appendix removed, obviously. But it was wrapped around so much that it was pinching my colon off. And ever since that point, bro, I can't trust any fart. Like, like, bro, the surgeon, the surgeon literally told me he has never seen anything like that in his entire life. And he's like, I've been doing this for like 20 years. I've never seen anything like that. That's crazy. Prepare me for my 30s, huh? Oh, yeah. When you turn 30 that morning, when you wake up, you're going to feel it. You're going to put your foot on the ground and you're going to stand up and you're going to think, oh man, I just slept rough last night, but that feeling is never going to go away. Another thing that they don't tell you about is out of nowhere, you will start to make random sounds for various activities. As in, when you like, uh, uh, let's say you got to reach underneath the sink and grab a garbage bag. That's just an example. I keep garbage bags under my sink. And as you do that, you find various parts of your body start cracking and popping. And you go, why does it do that? That's just a natural thing. It just happens. Your body starts just to crack my back. Huh? Oh, I just went like this and said, just cracked my back. Because that's how it works now. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. Oh, and here's another fun fact. This is this is this is a this is some real shit, right? I have psoriasis, right? I didn't develop it until I was 32. I never had it my whole life. And then now I have it. it came in the 30s. I've had and arthritis in my knees since I was 13. Like there's thousands upon thousands of other people all in that same age bracket, they have the same thing. Is that a coincidence? I think it's because I think it's because we had chicken pox. I think it's because when we were babies, we got experimented with like. Or is that shingles? Am I thinking of shingles? I had chicken pox when I was a kid. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. I, I so didn't I. I never I got. I have a scar right here on my forehead from it. And I don't have any scars from it, but I distinctly remember where uh, having oven mitts taped to my hands for like fucking week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. it, That's it was, crazy. It was winter gloves. My mom put winter gloves on me. Yeah. Well, cause you're, you're my brother's age. And by the, by the time, by the time you guys were little, they were just, they immunized everybody in the chicken box. So you got, like, you're, yeah, your whole generation. I don't think anybody really got it. Mm-mm. But my like, brother did, but I never, and we're not vaccinated for anything. And this also could have been because where I, where I grew up when I was little, little in North Carolina, it's 2021 right now. Right. But the way they live life, it's like the nineties. They've always been a little bit behind everywhere else. Old country type shit. So I grew up when I was little, if one person got chicken pox, the whole house got it. We all go like, you know, you just let everyone get exposed with it. That way you ain't got to worry about it no more. If you haven't had chicken pox, you go sit with that motherfucker and catch it. That's like right now in my house, my son tested positive for COVID. I'm also sick. I get tested tomorrow. I'm pretty sure I'm also going to test positive. We made a pack two years ago. If one of us gets it, we all get it. We go through it together. 
We're going to be safer at the end of it, though. Natural immunizations, we won't be able to get it for 9 to 12 months. Not getting vaccinated for it. Fuck no. I got an immune system for a reason, right? I'm going to take some vitamin D. I'm going to take some zinc. I can't get my hands on you know, the rest of the stuff that all the billionaires and shit like that can get. But everyone know, here I, has that except for me. I remember. I'm going to go on a fast. I tested positive for it, but they said I'm anti symptomatic. If they would just stop testing people, they'd find out that probably nobody really had that much. <laughs> if you stop testing yeah. for it, ain't no one going to have it, bitch. Well, yeah, because they ain't testing for it. How are they going to know? Clown sheeper. I get you, bro, because the only people dying are the people in the hospital. I'm going to start working on that song. I'm going to put that out. It's just a fact, though. I mean, I think you should also make a song called Pudding Pop. Huh? You should make a song called Pudding Pop. And you can play yeah. it in the background while you go swimming and pudding. And I'll, I'll throw in like a. Oh, I almost dropped my ball. Swimming, swimming in that pudding town. Swimming. Oh, right? Have a little little beat in the background. Remember, I was going to give you that. <laughs> right? I can see it happening. I can make sounds. That's one of my other one of my other things. That's what I do. He's like the guy from Police they Academy. Lied. They lied about COVID to make us a belief deceiver. Do you think cats are really the true protectors of the universe? I don't like cats. Think about it. They are an ever ancient culture, and they are always took uh, took to be sacred. And cats are natural protectors. You know they're the most feared predators in, in in the environment. I did not know that. The average house cat, like my boy Blue back here, my boy Blue. What up, Blue? Um, they used to be the size of, you know, one of those medium sized dogs. But due to domestication, we had to, uh, they, they got smaller because we, we domesticated cats out of necessity because they were killing off our young. So we took this, we killed off the bigger ones and kept the smaller ones until they got that size. Do or, what up blue again? Huh? Do that what up blue thing again. You're my boy, blue. Why? You ain't never seen that movie? No, I, who? Who responded and said, "What up, Blue? You that did you? That wasn't a button. What up, no, blue? that was Pat. That was you, Pat. Yeah, yeah. that's our little Joe, thing. You should make that a button. That that that's our little thing. Well, we just do it every time he comes up in the screen. Every time I see him, because that's my homie. Do like that cat, right? Um, he was a, he was a street cat. My niece and my mom found him one day and brought him home. And my little brother, when he first moved up here came out of his bedroom one day he was a little, a little stoned and uh he stepped on the cat's head and almost killed him he was he was a kitten i bottle fed him it's to the point now that i'm pretty much the only person that that cat fucks with so when he pops up in the podcast we just yell for him what's up my boy blue his name isn't even blue his name is Lil. i thought you pushed the button and it responded what up blue i thought that was hella cool Oh yeah, no, I don't. I can't do shit like that on Zoom. If I could, I would, bro. Because if I could do shit like that on Zoom, I would have our fucking safety meeting thing pop up with a glass breaking emoji in the back, like. But I can't do that I shit. So. I have to do all that post edit. I'm hungry as hell. So, since everyone's staying safe tonight, um, I would just like to say once again, fuck Tom Brady. And let's continue to have these safety meetings, try to make the world a better place. Feeling safe yet? Stay toasty, my friends. What you said. <laughs>